Good morning, and welcome to worship the second Sunday of Advent, December 6th, as we celebrate morning prayer and Holy Communion here at First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in downtown Columbus, Ohio. We're glad that you have joined us. As we step into this day, we hope that if you're looking for a church home, you consider us as you draw closer to Christ and as you seek a family in Christ. In this season of hope, may you find a home with us. And I would invite you to participate this week in, this, in a class for new members. My name is Tim Ahrens. I'm the senior minister here at First Congregational Church, and we believe here that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I'm joined today in the leadership of worship by Reverend Emily Krauss Corzine, Mr. Kevin Jones, and Mr. Mark Williams. We are glad that you are with us in worship, and we look forward to celebrating communion later in the service. So put together the elements of communion where you are in your home and be prepared as we come to that place of the sacrament in our time together. Also, a huge thank you to all of you who have contributed throughout this year and this time apart to keep us going in our ministry and mission. If you'd like to make a contribution, there is a place in the bulletin today through the QR code, or you can go to the church website and contribute as well by going to www.first-church.org to the Give Prompt. Also, you can go to receive the bulletin for today at the Worship Prompt. So go to the site and join us in worship. We hope as well that as you step into this day, you know the fullness of God's love as we worship God together. Welcome to First Church. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all the eyes shall see it together. John the Baptist called people to repentance, to prepare them for the coming of God's reign. Let us too repent, that we may be ready for God who comes to us. God. We confess it is not easy to wait for you. Our world worships the power that acts quickly through force. How difficult it is for us to wait for the power of your rule, which comes slowly through love. We admit that while claiming to desire your reign of peace and justice, we take part in the ways of war, hatred, and injustice. We leave little room for you to act in our lives. We turn now to you in repentance and openness to your spirit. Forgive us and show us how to clear a path for you. Come to us in your Christ and reveal your reign on earth. Amen. God says, remember these things, O Israel, for you are my servant. You will not be forgotten by me. I have swept away your transgressions like a cloud and your sins like mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. I say to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. O oh God, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. <laughs> Together in the psalm of the day, 
Psalm 85. You have been gracious to your land, O God. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what you are saying, for you are speaking peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly your salvation is very near to those who fear you. Let your glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. You, O God, will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before you, and peace shall be a pathway for your feet. We welcome you today as we celebrate the presence of Christ in our midst, and I invite you to pass the peace of Christ with one another. May the peace of God be always with you. And also with you. Hello, everyone. How are you today? So I bet some of you are watching this in your favorite pajamas. Or maybe you're, um, you're laying there and you're covered up in your favorite blanket. I bet that some of your parents are sitting in their favorite chair. Yeah? Did I catch it right? Did I guess it right? Well, <clears throat> we have our favorite pillow or a favorite cover or a favorite pajamas because it brings us comfort. It makes us feel good, right? Well, today is all about comfort and our scripture talks about comfort. But I want you to think about this. We're worrying a lot right now. We've got lots of things going on in our country and, and in our city and our county and we get a little worried. But you know what? When we get into our comfort of wrapping ourselves up into whatever makes us feel comfortable, we start to feel a little better. You know what? God. God is that comfort. We do worry a lot, but we know that God is taking care of us and watching over us. Comfort ye my people. So the next time you wrap up or the next time you get into that comfy chair and you just kind of settle in, remember that comfort is like God wrapping God's arms around you. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you so much for the comfort that you bring to us when we see you and hear you and feel you. Comfort us in this time of such unrest. Keep us safe and wrap us in your arms. In your son's precious name, amen. See you next week. We light the second candle of Advent to proclaim the coming of the life of God into the world. Holy One, we light the second candle, a candle offering comfort to weary spirits after a year of pain and loss. Let its glow remind us of your tender care and warm our lives in the light of peace. Let it guide us to your presence in our midst, leading us to your justice 
and joy in the service of peace. God be with us all in this light of peace. Let us pray. Saving God, look upon your world and heal your land and your people. Prepare us to be changed. This Advent teach us to be tender and just as you are. May the desire to sow peace kindle in us like a light in the darkness. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Says, Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and God's arm rules. God's reward is with God, and God's recompense comes before. God will feed the flock like a shepherd, will gather the lambs, carry them, and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The second reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, beginning in the first verse of the first chapter. 
Listen for the word of God. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make the paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to see him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. If I had stood in this pulpit one year ago today, the second Sunday of Advent, 2019, and I had told you that I had had a vision of more than 13 million Americans infected with a virus that I didn't know the name of, but I knew it had happened, and that of those 13 million affected, more than 265,000 would have been dead from this virus that I knew of with no name. If I told you that businesses and corporations would have their staff across the world working from home, that most of the food that you got would be delivered to your door rather than bought in a supermarket, that restaurants would be closed, that schools and universities and churches and all public meetings and rallies (coughs) would be done on Zoom, something that a year ago you may not have known existed, if I told you that they would be live streamed if they weren't on Zoom, If I had told you that the economic shutdown and hardships would affect millions and millions of people, and if I had told you that at Thanksgiving you would have had no one at your table except perhaps your immediate family, but you would have had family members and friends from around the globe on Zoom again to celebrate Thanksgiving dinner with you, you would have told me that I had lost my mind. And you would have told me that I should probably get some serious help for this. And if you hadn't told me that, you probably would have encouraged me to go find a job somewhere else. So that's what's happened in a whole year's time from one advent to the next. 
This world has turned upside down. What seemingly would have been absurd beyond measure 52 weeks ago is now our reality. Home has taken on a whole new meaning. Home is where we reside, but it has become for us as well the place where we work, the place where we go to school, the place where we go to church, the place where most of our meals are eaten, the place where we say about the four walls that they've changed those four walls, that their meaning has taken on a whole new dimension from four walls. Instead of the place of refuge and safe return at the end of a hard day, home, these four walls, has bec have become our entire universe. But unlike the homes that we had come to know and love through the generations, our homes have become bunkers in some ways against an unseen enemy, a virus which strikes quick and hard. Many of us have had no guests and no friends in our homes for over nine months. And the ones who have entered, we have told to wash their hands, put on their masks, put on some gowns, and we've run them through tests with gloves and everything included. Home has, has become both a nest for our immediate family and a fort against the world. Home has become a place of respite and a place of absolute protection. Home has become a place of comfort, but it has also become a desert of sorts. Our homes have become our postinia, our postinia. In his book, The Desert in the City, Brother Carlos Corretto, a monk who worked in the deserts of North Africa as well as in the metropolis of Rome, tells the story of a Russian word, postinia, which is the Russian word for desert. Well, postinia may mean something geographical in nature, a place, a hermitage, a quiet place set apart. It is also a place where people go to withdraw in silence and to discover God. Postinia has this mystical quality. Postinia is the place where we go, says one Russian mystic, to raise our arms in prayer and penance toward God. Postinia is the place where we gather courage. It is the place where we uh, pronounce words of truth, remembering that God is in fact our truth. It is the place where we purify ourselves and prepare ourselves to act as if touched by the burning coal that was placed by the angel on the lips of the prophet. This Advent, all of us are called to discover postinia in our homes, the desert in our homes. We are called to postinia to gather courage. We are called to pronounce the truth, remembering that God is the truth. In the desert of the city, we will discover the truth of this season in unlikely places from unsuspecting people. Just ask Bill Gettler. Reverend Bill Gettler is a Presbyterian pastor and assistant dean of ministerial studies at Yale Divinity School. Bill discovered truth on Church Street in New Haven, Connecticut, in the person of Danny, a homeless neighbor of Bill's. Bill tells the story of Danny who first appeared in his front porch on a cold December morning. And he came years ago, hat in hand. He was honest, at least. He was sleeping here and there since getting back into town, he said, mostly on the porch of the Red Cross headquarters across from the church. The people there didn't seem to mind, and he always cleared out before anyone arrived for work in the morning. Danny didn't want anyone to be frightened. He needed some food. He needed some money for a bus. Bill had just hung the Moravian star on the front porch of his home. He had just placed his Advent candles in the windows to look beautiful for all the neighbors to see. It was a pretty tough moment for Bill to tell Danny he couldn't help him. 
He couldn't refuse him. So against his better judgment, he reached into his wallet and pulled out money for Danny. As he was leaving, Danny turned and looked in Bill's eyes. He said, is this the way it's supposed to be? He was off before Bill could reply or even register what it was he had really said. He came back with one need or another throughout that winter and across the years that followed. Through housing placements and jobs that never seemed to work for Danny, Bill kept track of him. Or was it really that Danny kept track of Bill? Their conversations would always open with, good morning, Reverend, from Danny. And then shortly after, Danny would deliver his one-line sermon. Reverend, is this the way it's supposed to be? It reached the point where Bill did everything he could to avoid Danny. If he saw him walking in downtown New Haven, he would take a side street. Slowing his steps, he would cross to avoid him, admitting that he did not feel that the relationship they had was healthy. He did not want to hear that question. He did not want to hear the one-line sermon over and over again. Reverend, is this the way it's supposed to be? On the surface, is this the way it's supposed to be? Seems innocuous. As you dig deeper, it seems disarming. And as you go even deeper, it is haunting. In God's creation, is it supposed to be this disharmonious? In society, is it supposed to be this hard to take care of our members on the margin? In the COVID-19 times, is it supposed to be this hard to wear a mask, to protect yourself and your neighbor? Is it supposed to be? Is it supposed to be? Is it supposed to be so hard that you have to beg upon the good hearts of others to simply have a place to stay at night as they are paid to work in buildings that are beautiful beyond belief? Are we all supposed to be in our homes right now like deserted desert flowers? Is this what Postinia looks like and feels like? How long, O oh Lord, how long will the stay-at-home order be? Is it supposed to be this way? John the Baptist didn't believe things were supposed to be the way they were. John was the odd and challenging cousin of Jesus and the first prophet of our Christian tradition. He appears in the wilderness with a two-line sermon of his own, not unlike Danny's one-liner. Drawing upon Isaiah's 500-year-old words, John proclaims, prepare the way of the Lord, make God's path straight. People must look at him as if he's crazy, but they also are drawn to him. They offer him bread to go with his wild honey. <laughs> they give him a bus ticket hoping that he'll land a real job. Like us, they would prefer to hear about the wonderful baby Jesus. People would say to John, hey, hey John, tell us about your cousin. We hear he's a real winner. How about telling us about his mom and dad on that journey to Bethlehem so long ago when they gave birth and brought him into this world? Tell us that story. Tell us about the Messiah born in a stable with all the animals. You know, that's the story we like to put on our Christmas cards. John, please tell us that story. But John responds, you are not ready for that story. You need to remember Isaiah first. Do you know what he says to people? Every valley will be lifted up. Every hill will be brought low. There will be equity for all, for the meek. There will be justice for the poor and then you will know that the Lord is coming. That's when it happens. It happens when we level the mountains and raise the deserts. The postinia out of which John comes 
and from which he speaks is a desert that is courageous and speaks to us the truth that we hesitate to hear. We want Christmas without the prophets. We really want the birth narrative without the desert storm. We want redemption without judgment. We want peace without any struggle. In addition, we would really like for all the Dannys and Danny's echoing words on Church Street, is this the way it's supposed to be? To simply go away. Please leave us alone. In the popular culture of which we're a part, Christmas arrives just following Halloween and it comes to full revelation a few hours after we put away the dinner plates on Thanksgiving. It comes with a plastic baby Jesus in the manger. It comes with the songs of the angels over our heads in the malls and the stores and now playing out on our TV sets on Spotify. Now it comes with our computers singing to us about cyberspace purchasing as well. But it comes from the God of consumerism. But you know what? That's not the way it's supposed to be. We're supposed to answer to a different God. Our God comes when our God comes. Our God comes from the desert. Our God comes from the postinia of our homes in the city. From the desert of our homes, God is proclaiming comfort, O comfort my people. God is calling us to establish our homes this Advent as places of hope, places of comfort, places where we can prepare a place for the coming of Christ. So before God arrives, get ready. This Advent, allow God in to make the rough places in your life plain. Allow God in to make the anxiety of your life a place of peace again. Allow God in to make the distress of your life a place of rest. Allow God in to care for the poverty in and around you. Allow God in, and only then will God's peace and God's justice fill the earth. When we allow God in, we can truly turn Danny's haunting question into a statement of faith. This is the way it's supposed to be. Amen. God be, God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of all wisdom, our hearts yearn for the warmth of your love, and our minds search for the light of your word. Increase our longing for Christ our Savior, and strengthen us to grow in love, that at the dawn of his coming we may rejoice in his presence and welcome the light of his truth. This day we offer prayers on behalf of this church, the community, and the world. O oh God, in these moments we lift to you those who are on our hearts and minds, those who are in need of healing, in body, mind, or spirit, those in our congregation, family, and friends. We pray for our nation, for our country's leaders during this time of transition. We pray for state and local officials as they navigate this coronavirus pandemic. We lift to you all who have died from this pandemic, for those lives lost and families who grieve, May this season, O oh God, be one of comfort for them who grieve. We lift to you, O oh God, the names that are on our hearts this day or situations that are, that are too hard to name aloud. Hear us as we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, 
as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God of grace, ever faithful to your promises, the earth rejoices in hope of our Savior's coming and looks forward with longing to his return at the end of time. Prepare our hearts to receive Christ when he comes. Amen. Each week at First Church, we take an offering that supports a ministry or mission working for issues of justice and mercy. This morning, our offering goes to support the work of the Downtowners, which is an ecumenical campus ministry program for local downtown institutions of higher learning, from Columbus State and CCAD to Franklin University, Capital Law School, and also Mount Carmel School of Nursing. So we ask that you support this program that helps young adults find their way to work for issues of justice and mercy in our community. Please give generously. Gather the elements close to you so that we may share in this feast that Christ has prepared for us. No matter what burden you carry this day, no matter the problems that are on your heart, you are welcome at this table of grace. Come, taste, and see that the Lord is good. Let us pray. We give you thanks and praise, O God for the glory and joy of creation, for the work of reconciliation, for the promise of love eternal, and for those who walk with us. In these Advent days, make us alert to your presence among us. Make us mindful for the ways that you are at work in our lives. Today, at this table, we remember your sacrifice for us. Blessed are you, O God. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, our host at this table. Blessed is your Spirit, your Spirit who settles in us and among us. And within these gifts of bread and cup, your Spirit transforms them, making them sacred and filling not for our own bodies, but also for our souls. 
Pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and cup, that together they may symbolize the body and blood of our Lord. So with gratitude and praise, we come to your table, ready to be filled, ready to be sent out, ready to be your people in the world. Amen. On the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took a loaf of bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you. Every time you drink it, remember me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us join in the post-communion prayer. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have brought us from darkness to light, from slavery to freedom, from death to rebirth. Transform our lives with this heavenly food, that we may shine with your love and take to the world the risen life of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. In preparing to depart, we as a faith community have heard the word and are called to respond and serve. There are many ways to serve our neighbors and this faith community during this pandemic. Watch your email church website and Facebook page for updates concerning our faith community and how we will organize to help those in need during this time. Just a reminder, all worship will be online until further notice no in-person worship. Please note all the virtual studies and meetings being offered this week. Faith formation continues each week online with exciting opportunities for learning and growing in our faith. Wednesday Connections for pre-K through fifth grade is in the form of a video on Facebook and our Youth with Youth Connections is on Sunday evenings at 6.30 p.m. And our formative discussions for adults will be held throughout the week Please see the details for our Advent study that will be led by Reverend Dr. Nancy Livingston. Please note all the upcoming Advent services and programs that will be online during this season. We invite you to the service of healing this Wednesday, December the 9th. Please read all the details about this important service. If you need to be in touch with Reverend Aarons or Reverend Corzine for emergency pastoral care or name a prayer request, please call 614-733-4547. This number is listed in the Depart to Serve leaflet. Just a reminder that your giving can be done through PayPal, Easy Tithe, or simply writing a check and sending it in the mail. No matter how you are giving, be sure to mark it for the mission of the week or to the regular church budget. <clears throat> If you've not done so, please like us on the First Church Facebook page. There will be numerous postings through this time for engagement, activities, and devotion. So please monitor your email, the church website, and Facebook page. 
We invite you to the virtual coffee hour after the service today. You may find the link in the Depart to Serve leaflet. Just click on the link and it will take you to the coffee hour. Let us sing the closing hymn as we depart with a heart to serve. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Because the world is filled with fear, go out in courage. Because the world is drowning in lies, speak the truth. Because the world is sick of despair, go out with joy. Because the world is seldom fair, go do the work of justice. Because the world is under judgment, go with mercy. Because the world is poor and starving, go forth with bread. Because the world will die without it, always go with love. Amen. Um.